Namo Adita Fa. Thanks so much for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This wonderful sound calls us back to our true home. The fifth mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by unmindful consumption, I vow to cultivate good health, both physical and mental, for myself, my family, and my society by practicing mindful eating, drinking, and consuming. I will ingest only items that preserve peace, well-being, and joy in my body, in my consciousness, and in the collective body and consciousness of my family and society. I'm determined not to use alcohol or any other items that contain toxins, such as certain TV programs, magazines, books, films, and conversations. I'm aware that to damage my body or my consciousness with these poisons is to betray my ancestors, my parents, my society, and future generations. I will work to transform violence, fear, anger, and confusion in myself and in society by practicing a diet for myself and for society. I understand that a proper diet is crucial for self-transformation and the transformation of society. For our Dharma lessons, we've been reading Taming the Monkey Mind, a guide to Pure Land practice by Buddhist scholar Chung Wei An and Dharma master Sudi Sukha. Today we're continuing in Appendix 1, which is The Bodhi Mind by Dharma master Thich Thien Tham. 4. Teachings on the Bodhi Mind The sutras have expand, expounded at length on the Bodhi Mind as exemplified in the following excerpts from the Avatamsaka Sutra. In such people arises the Bodhi mind, the mind of great compassion for the salvation of all beings, the mind of great kindness for unity with all beings, the mind of happiness to stop the mass misery of all beings, the altruistic mind to repulse all that is not good, the mind of mercy to protect from all fears, the unobstructed mind to get rid of all obstacles, the broad mind to pervade all universes, the infinite mind, to pervade all spaces, the undefiled mind, to manifest the vision of all Buddhas, the purified mind, to penetrate all knowledge of past, present, and future, the mind of knowledge, to remove all obstructive knowledge and enter the ocean of all-knowing knowledge. Just as someone in water is in no danger from fire, the bodhisattva who is soaked in the virtue of the aspiration for enlightenment, bodhi mind, is in no danger from the fire of knowledge of individual liberation. Just as a diamond, even if cracked, relieves poverty, in the same way the diamond of the bodhi mind, even if split, relieves the poverty of the mundane world. Just as a person who takes the elixir of life lives for a long time and does not grow weak, the bodhisattva who uses the elixir of the bodhi mind goes around in the mundane world for countless eons without becoming exhausted and without being stained by the ills of the mundane world. We can see that in the Avatamsaka Sutra, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas explain the virtues of the Bodhi mind at length. The above are merely a few major excerpts. The sutras also state the principal door to the way is development of the Bodhi mind. The principal criterion of the practice is the making of vows. If we do not develop the broad and lofty Bodhi mind and do not make firm and strong vows, we will remain as we are now, in the wasteland of birth and death for countless eons to come. Even if we were to cultivate during that period, we would find it difficult to persevere and would only waste our efforts. Therefore, we should realize that in following Buddhism, we should definitely develop the Bodhi mind without delay.
May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be at peace. Namo Adidatha. Thanks for so much for joining me today.